Happy Friday. So I haven't done a vlog in a really, really long time and I've had some thoughts that I want to share with you guys. Hi, we are Luke and Heather Bell and we have eight children and we are just the Bell's 10. So like I said, I have some thoughts. Um, I have really, really been thinking about our page and just how we present ourselves. I've been seeing a lot of families, vloggers and um, single moms and family pages that are really getting dissected just for different things that they're posting on their social media accounts. And I had heard a, another large creator say, if your page, would your page survive if your children were not on the page? Would it still keep going? Would people still be interested in your page? You know, and I got to thinking about that. Like, of course, we're a family page. And all my kids like to be a part of it. Sometimes they don't, so I don't put them on. But if, if, our, if my kids weren't allowed on the page, would, would our page still keep going? And I would hope it would. Like, I feel like I do enough with cooking, um, organizing, just sharing different things that I do for my family. I would hope that people would still be interested. Um, and then I got to thinking, you know, am I oversharing my kids? Like, that really, I'm seeing that everywhere. I'm seeing family vlogs. I'm seeing mom and daughters, you know, dads and daughters. And I'm just hearing so many things. And I got to be honest with you, like, it breaks my heart to see all this, you know, and just to be aware of what's going on. And I definitely don't want to be a page that people think we exploit our children or that we invade our, their privacy because, you know, I would never do that with my children, neither with my husband. You know, we, we adopted seven of our children sick through foster care. And even with our children coming through foster care, we really were still very respectful of their boundaries. We were respectful of their story. Like, for example, like my boys and my daughter, I don't know a lot of the history that happened with them. I have never asked because I really just don't feel like that's, you know, it's not my story to tell. And I know a lot of things that happened when they were in their homes and pretty some serious, you know, pretty serious things. But I've never once asked them what happened when you're home, what happened when you're by yourself, you know, just because that's, that's their that's their history. That's their privacy. And I feel like when my kids are comfortable to talk about it, then they'll come up and, and tell me about it, but they might never be comfortable. It might be something they have to deal with on their own. It might be something that they want to share, but never once have I asked their story. I don't know a lot of the history. I'm just here to, I just feel as foster parents, we're not here to completely erase their history. We're just here to add to it. Um, we're not here to take away the birth parents, to take away the birth families. We're just here to become another extension of their family. I mean, how great is it to have a couple parents that, you know, are healthy and strong and like, you know, four sets of grandparents and I mean, you know, have siblings all over, you know? And so it was really important to me and my husband that when we brought our kids into our home, some of them stayed with us, some of them did not. And I'll never share those stories either of the kids who came and went because it's not my story, my story to tell. And as far as my kids, you know, adopting them, you know, we were always, we did open. Um, even though I do realize foster care adoption is considered closed, but we always chose to be open because I really felt like my kids needed, they needed family, any family that was healthy, excuse me. Any family that was healthy, they needed them. You know, they needed them to heal. They needed them to go forward. They needed them, you know, for their past. So we never closed those doors. If a family member was healthy and strong, you know, no matter who it was, if they were healthy and strong, we definitely had them a part of our, our family. And still now our kids get to see um, any family member that's healthy, any family member that they want to see, we don't push our kids into anything. It's their choice. You know, even my youngest, who's 15 and 16, that's their choice. I'm not going to make them go see a family member. I'm not going to make them meet a family member. That's their choice. And I respect that because, you know, I mean, I was also adopted from my birth father, you know, and, um, or my, I'm sorry, I was adopted. My, well, he'd be like my adoptive dad, but you know, I always considered him my dad. 
And, you know, I found my birth father on my own, you know, and I sought him out and I was very open and honest with my mom and dad. And I said, hey, you know, I just want to I want to search him out because I just felt like there was a hole because I really didn't get to know him. And I know the situation was a little different, but I never really got to know him. And so I always grew up wondering, like the the circumstances, like why? Why isn't he in my life? Why does he not contact me? Why? You know, do, can't we talk about them? You know, those were things that I grew up with that just left this hole. And I just, I didn't want that for my children. I really wanted to, I wanted to be a part of their family, but not take away from their family, you know? And, um, I, I just, I didn't want to shut any doors, you know? And I really do feel like that has really helped our children to heal, to understand, to get to know things. And also for adoption, like a couple of the children we adopted when they were younger, but it, it was always a talking, like we would always talk about it. So I, I didn't want my kids to like be 10 and be like, oh, I'm adopted. Like I wanted it to be a part of our life. So we would talk about, you know, their birth parents and their birth families and being adopted and what it meant. And, and even when they were little to, before they even understood it, we would discuss it. So when they started to understand, it wouldn't be such a blow. Like, what? What do you mean I'm adopted? And it just became part of our everyday life. So when they got older and understood, it was a very easy transition for them for understanding. It wasn't like a big blow to them. Like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm adopted. You know, and I've had friends that have kept it a secret and haven't told their children they're adopted and then later told them. And it, and it really was not good, you know, and that's not something that we wanted to do. We always want to be open we, you know, even when we adopted David, we did open adoption. And, you know, when David was born, um, the, the, what they normally do is the parents that are adopting the baby would go into another room to start bonding while the birth mom would stay in one room. And I didn't do that. I said, absolutely not. I'm going to stay with this birth mom. She gave me her child. She's given me her child. That's probably one of the hardest things or the hardest thing she'll ever do in her life. I wasn't going to leave her by herself. No matter how much the hospital pressed it, I said, I am not leaving this room. I am staying with her. When she leaves, I will leave. And that's what I did. They had the head nurse of the hospital. They had the adoption worker. They had the, you know, the highest human resources. They had people in the room t trying to convince me to leave her alone. <clears throat> and I said, I'm not. You're wasting your time, but that's not how we do things. I don't care how we do things, how you do things. I am not leaving this mom. And I really do feel like because we made that decision to be a part of her life and to allow her to be part of David's life, I feel that's helped our relationship even now, you know, 23 years later, there's no ill feelings. We understand life, we understand that life gets busy, so sometimes you can't see them, but we always kept those lines of communication, we kept those lines of communication open with every single one of our children because it was very important. It's very important to know who you are. It's very important to know your family, you know, and I never talked bad about them or shared things about them. You know, I mean, we've shared a little bit of things and some things we've shared. I wish I hadn't. I, I, I apologize. And I wish I hadn't, especially with Josh. I feel like I've shared a little too much with Josh. And I really wasn't aware of that until I started watching these other creators talk about child privacy and and safety, child safety and security, especially in social media. Things are just going so crazy. And so I have really been careful about things that I have shared. Maybe our page isn't grown as fast because of it. And that's okay. That's okay. Because I want to make sure my family's safe and my kids are comfortable. And honestly, to be honest with you, because I haven't pushed my children into being on our platform or made them be in a video or made them do this or made them do this, they actually ask me now, hey, can I be in a video? Hey mom, can I do this collab with you? Do you got anything coming up? Like they are coming to me and they're coming to me with ideas. Mom, look at this. We got to do this. Mom, look at this. We got to do this. And I think it's because I didn't pressure my children into doing stuff. And honestly, you know, there's some collabs we get that are, that are not, you know, real expensive. And I asked my kids, do you want this? Because I don't need this, you know, and I know they're trying to get ahead and they're trying to establish a new life and they need money and I'm okay. We don't need the money. You know, we're set. And everything we get, we invest in our children. We invest in our bills. You know, we can't live off social media. We're just not, I guess I'm not blessed enough to have so much money coming in that I can just live off being a TikToker. I just can't. 
We have a family farm and we have a masonry company and we like working. We don't want to quit our work. We like working. And what if, what if the social media co- comes to a crashing halt? Then what? Then what? You know, and so, you know, uh, my kids are now part of the business. You know, we're, we're, I'm asking them, hey, these are things coming up. Does anybody want it? And they're like, yeah, yeah. You know, and I help them video it and edit it. But I just, I, I, you know, the reason I bring all this up is because I just, like I said, I've been seeing so many, so many things and it's just disheartening to me and makes me sad and makes me want to cry. It makes me angry. And I just want to make sure that our family is not like that and that our testimony on social media platforms is not one of greediness and dishonesty and exploitive and, you know, um, parents that overstep their boundaries. I just don't want to be one of those families. And I, and I have to be honest with you, I understand why some families are doing this and, you know, moms and daughters and dads and daughters, because when we first got on this platform, it's so easy to share every part of your life. Why? Because you want the views, you want the followers. It's so easy to over grocery shop. It's so easy to house tour because why you want to give the people what they want and you want the views and you want the follows. And then when, when higher followers, it means more collabs and more money and more money per view and which we don't actually make money off TikTok per view at all. I don't know how anybody makes money off TikTok if you don't have a campaign. But um, I, I was getting sucked into that. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I was getting sucked into it. I was over grocery shopping and overdoing this. And my husband's like, you have to stop. Like, we can't eat this much. And and why are you going to the grocery store again? And, you know, you, you can't be doing this, you know. And I, I, sorry about that. My daughter's calling. And I realized, you know, he's right. Like, I can't be doing this. People are going to like us, support us, and love our family for who we are, not for putting unrealistic fake stuff on. Now the cooking, do I cook like that? Yes. I always cook like that. I make lots of cookies. I make lots of muffins. I make lots of casseroles. I do cook like that. I've always done that. I don't know how to cook small. I've done it forever, you know, and I do can big and we do, you know, there are some things we do that are big. I mean, with 10 people and also having, you know, four and five kids at our house every day, you know, I mean, there are things I have to do big, but there are a lot of things that we've changed. You know, we, I am really trying to change how I um, share my children. And I do actually show my kids the videos before I even post them on. I say, hey, let me look at this. What do you think? And sometimes they're like, no, no I don't want to be on that. Or I don't want you to say that. And I've, I've changed it. I've adjusted. So I always ask first. My kids are never surprised when a video is put on. You know, and with Joshua, he does give me consent, but you know, he does kind of struggle. So he might not understand always. And I actually had to apologize to him because I felt like I did overstep my boundary. And so now I'm very, I'm making sure, Hey Josh, I'd like to do this. What do you think? You know, and I'm, I'm being very careful because I think I did overstep it and I did use my son and it makes me sick that I did. And it makes me sad, but I'm trying to get it right. I have apologized to my family. If I overstep my boundaries, I've apologized to my son I've apologized to my viewers because I just want to be genuine and sincere. I don't want you guys to think that we are a family that just does things because we only care about the platform and not the message. And our message is that foster care and adoption can be great, but you have to have, you have to really make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and make sure you're including the family and don't shut the doors and make sure you're giving them privacy and, and that we're a page that people want to laugh and and, and I know a lot of people don't like my recipes, but I don't show you everything. I only show you a couple recipes a week, maybe one a week. I don't always cook like that. I do cook just chicken, green beans, and a salad. We do that, but nobody wants to see that, you know? So I just wanted to get on here. I just have so many emotions and so many feelings about what I'm seeing on these platforms and what I'm hearing and watching. And I just, I just don't want to be like that. I don't want to be a part of that. I want to be somebody who people see as a breath of fresh air, a good testimony, a mom who really loves her kids, a mom who's doing what's best for her kids and not just for her own gain. I just don't want to be that type of person. So that's my thoughts on all that. Um, Our page probably looks a little different because we're really trying to be careful with privacy and my, my kids' safety's first. If I have to choose between this platform and my kids, it will always be my kids, hands down, hands down.